In this video, you're going to learn how to test asynchronous functions. Before we get into that, I want to make a quick note about the change in audio. Unfortunately, the microphone I've been using so far throughout the course has broken. I've replaced it with a better one, which is hopefully a lot crisper and clearer, though you might need to adjust your audio levels either up or down for it to sound just right. Now, I usually try not to update my gear in the middle of a course, but unfortunately, I had no choice in this instance. All right, now let's get down to testing asynchronous functions. The process of testing asynchronous functions isn't that different from synchronous ones, like what we've done already, but it is a little different, so it justifies its own video. To kick things off, we're going to make a fake one using set timeout to simulate a delay over inside of utils.js. Just below where we make our add function, I'm going to make one called async add. It's essentially going to have the same features, but it's going to use set timeout and it's going to have a callback to simulate a delay. Now in the real world, this delay might be a database request or an HTTP request. We'll be dealing with that in the following sections. For now though, module.exports.async add. This is going to take three arguments as opposed to the two the add function took, A, B, and a callback. And this is what's going to make the function asynchronous. Eventually, once the set timeout is up, we're going to call the callback with the sum, whether it's 1 plus 3 being 4 or 5 plus 9 being 14. Next up, we can put the arrow in arrow function and open and close our curly braces. Inside of here, as I mentioned, we're going to be using set timeout to create that delay. Nothing new so far. We'll pass in a callback and we'll pass in our timeout. I'm going to go with one second in this case. Now, by default, if your tests take longer than two seconds, Mocha is going to assume that is not what you wanted and it's going to fail. That's why I'm using one second in this case. Inside of our callback, we can call the actual callback argument with the sum a plus b, just like this. And there we go. We now have an async add function and we can start writing a test for it. Over inside of the utils test file, just under our previous test for utils.add, I'm going to add a new one for async add. The test setup is going to look really similar. We will be calling it and we will be passing in a string as the first argument and a callback as the second. It should async add to numbers. Then we're going to add our callback just like this. And inside of here, we can get started calling utils.async add. I'm going to call it using utils.asyncAd. And we're going to go ahead and pass in those three arguments. I'll use four and three, which should result in seven. And we'll provide the callback function, which should get called with that value, the value being seven. Right here inside of the callback arguments, we would expect something like the sum to come back. Now we can start making some assertions about that sum variable using expect. We can pass it into expect to make our assertions. And these assertions aren't going to be new. It's stuff we've already done. I'm going to expect that the sum equals using to be the number seven. Then I'm going to check that it's a number using to be a inside of quotes number. Now, obviously, if it is equal to seven, that means it is a number. But I'm using both here just to simulate exactly how chaining is going to work inside of your expect calls. Now that we have our assertions in place, let's go ahead and run our test and see what happens. I'm going to run from the terminal npm run test hyphen watch to start up our node mon watching script. All of our tests run. You can see right here we have three. That's because I did not save the file yet. I'm going to go ahead and save the file. Now our tests are going to run and the test does indeed pass. The only problem is that it's passing for the wrong reasons. If I were to change seven to 10, and save the file, the test is still going to pass. Right here, you see we have four tests passing. Now, the reason this test is passing is not because the assertion right here is valid. It's passing because we have an asynchronous action that takes one second right here. This function is going to return before the async callback gets fired. When I say function returning, I'm referring to this callback function, the second argument to it. This is when Mocha thinks your test is done. This means that these assertions never run. The Mocha output has already said our test passes before this callback ever gets fired. What we need to do is tell Mocha this is going to be an asynchronous test that's going to take time. To do this, all we do is we provide an argument right here inside of the callback function we pass to it. We're going to call this one done. 
When you have the done argument specified, Mocha knows that means you have an asynchronous test and it's not going to finish processing this test until done gets called. This means we can call done after our assertions. With this in place, our test is now going to run. The function will return right after it calls async add, but that's okay because we have done specified. About a second later, our callback function is going to fire. Inside of here, we're going to make our assertions. This time, the assertions will matter because we have done and we haven't called it yet. After the assertions, we call done. This tells Mocha that we're all done with the test. It can go ahead and process the result, letting us know whether it passed or failed. This is going to fix that error. If I save the file in this state, it's going to rerun the tests, and we're going to see that our test, should async add to numbers, is indeed going to fail. Over inside of the terminal, I'm going to go ahead and open up the error message. We have expected 7 to be 10. This is exactly what we thought would happen the first time around when we didn't use done. But as we can see, we do need to use done when we're doing something asynchronous inside of our tests. Now I can go ahead and change this expectation back to 7, save the file, and this time around things should work as expected. Notice that one second delay as it runs this test. It can't report right away because it has to wait for done to get called. Down below, our total test time is now about a second. You can see that right here, we have four tests passing. Mocha also warns you when a test takes a long time because it assumes that's not expected. Nothing inside of Node, even a database or HTTP request should take even close to a second. So it's essentially letting you know that there's probably an error somewhere inside of your function. It's taking a really, really long time to process. In our case, though, the one second delay was clearly set up inside of utils, so there's no need to worry about that warning. With this in place, we now have a test for our very first asynchronous method. All we had to do is add a done as an argument and call it once we were done making our assertions. Now it's time for a challenge. I want you to create an asynchronous version of the square method down below. Go ahead and have it wait a second before calling the callback with the value x times x. Then, over inside of the utils test file, I want you to create a test that verifies the number that comes back is indeed the square. In this case, you could pass in three and get nine back. And I want you to verify it's a number. You're going to need to use done to get this done because it's going to be an asynchronous function. Go ahead and do the same thing for square that we just did for add. When you're done, you can go ahead and click play. How'd it go? I hope you were able to create that sync function and write a test that verifies it works as expected. In order to get started, I am going to define the function first, and then we'll worry about writing that test. Over inside of the utils file, I can get started down below the square method, creating a new one called async square. Module.exports dot async square. It's going to take two arguments, the original argument, which we called x, and the callback function. That's going to get called after our one second delay. And then I can finish up the arrow function and we can start working on the body of async square. It's going to look pretty similar to the async add one we'll call set timeout, passing in a callback and a delay. In this case, the delay is going to be the same. We'll go with one second. Now we can go ahead and actually call the callback. And this is going to trigger the callback function that got passed in. And we're going to pass in the value x times x, which will properly square the number passed in right here. Now over inside of the test file, things are indeed passing, but we haven't added a test for this function, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Inside of the utils test file, the next thing you needed to do was call it. Down here, I'm going to call it to make a new test for this async square function. It should async square a number. Perfect. Next up, we're going to provide the callback function that's going to get called when the test actually executes. And since we are testing an async function, I'm going to put done right here. This is going to tell Mocha to wait until done is called to decide whether or not the test passed. Down below, we can now call utils dot async square, passing in a number of our choice. I'm going to go ahead and use five. Next up, we can pass in a callback. This is going to get the final result right here. We'll create a variable to store that result. Now that we have this in place, we can start making our assertions. The assertions are going to be done using the expect library. We're going to make some assertions about the response variable. We're going to assert that it equals using to be the number 25, which is five times five. And we'll also use to be a to assert something about the type of the value. 
In this case, we want to make sure that the square is indeed a number as opposed to a Boolean string or object. With this in place, I can now save the file, but before I do, I do need to call done. Remember, if you don't call done, your test is never going to finish. You might find that every once in a while, you're going to get an error like this over inside of the terminal. You're going to get an error timeout. The 2000 milliseconds has exceeded. And this is when Mocha cuts off your test. If you see this, this usually means two things. One, you have an async function that never actually calls the callback. So your call to done never gets fired. Or two, you just never call done in which case you can put done right here. If you see this message, it usually means there's a small typo somewhere in the async function. Don't worry, it's super easy to overcome. Either fix things over in the method itself by making sure the callback is called or fix things over in the test by calling done. And when you save the file, you should now see all of your tests are passing. Right here, we have five tests passing and it took two seconds to do that. This is fantastic. We now have a way to test synchronous functions and asynchronous functions. This is going to make testing a lot more flexible. It's going to let us test essentially everything inside of our applications. That is it for this one. I will see you next time as we keep working through the different ways to test your node applications. Up next, we're going to look at how we can test our express apps.